at Viking Werewolf Trucker. Happy Easter. Some of you folks are celebrating. Um, I'm celebrating, but I'm here in the hotel looking at the, out the window with some mountains, the Idaho mountains, just gorgeous up here. Probably where Wolverine lives, somewhere up in there. I've got a great stream today. This young lady has been on the stream uh, uh, a couple years back as well, like, I think two or three interviews. But I want to retell her story tonight because her story of just what she's done in trucking is very powerful and a very salient point. So let me let me bring her on. Miss Linnell, how do you hear me? Let's go ahead and address your neck brace right off the bat. <laughs> okay. I hear you good. Uh, so um, I uh, just had major neck surgery. Um, actually, it was March 2nd. So um, just a little over a month ago. That was uh, because last year I was uh, rear-ended twice at high speed and sideswiped and um it my neck's always bothered me but your body adapts and the the uh, impact undid whatever my body had done to cope with it and I had pain uh running down my arm and loss of um of uh what do you call it strength and so um anyway they fused, they kind of did a daisy chain and fused the front and back. So I've got um, over here, I've got about a six or eight inch um, incision. It's on this side. It throws me off seeing myself backwards. <laughs> no, I know, I know. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's from here to here and then uh, in the back, the same thing. So um, I'm probably going to get a zipper tattoo in the back and uh, maybe a rose or something off the thing in the front because I can't do I was all excited because I'm like uh I thought I was going to have a round the neck thing and I'd have an awesome Frankenstein costume for uh, Halloween but now I'll have to since it's uh, centered I'll have to do like two-face or something for Halloween I don't know <laughs> well let's 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 back up just as just a skosh on that okay how were how were you were you in your personal vehicle or were you in a truck when you were hit so the first time I was hit, which was the worst, I was in my personal vehicle. Zane was with me and um, I was on my way to work and um, some guy just plowed into me at, I don't know, about 75 miles an hour, which um, I had just gotten a, a little Honda Accord to replace my Tahoe that was stolen um, like four or five months prior to that off so, the yard no less off the yeah, yard no less off my yep off my um employer's yard so and they were in an suv and um going probably <laughs> 75 miles an hour and i uh ping-ponged on the um barriers the cement barriers and spun around a few times and it was actually really amazing because when you looked at the car if you took the car and split it lengthwise from nose to bumper the the passenger side where zane was completely untouched it looked like you know brand new on the driver's side completely demolished and then i went backwards and you know those rounded um seat belt things mm -hmm. i actually hit it so hard that it um, put a hole in my head and I had to go and get stitches and it freaked out Zane. Um, and, um, we kind of did the, one of those buddy, uh, drive movies where they're in an accident and they both stare at each other and go, ah! <laughs> it was like that. And then we came to a stop and Zane was like, I don't want to be in the car. I said, don't get out. Cause we were right in the middle and we had no lights, no nothing. It was really bad. Wow. Um, but a hit and run, gone. And um, anyway, so um, that started it. And then I got sideswiped when I went to help um, our sister for Hub Group, the sister uh, terminal in California, sideswiped by a super trucker. And he just kept going. And then uh, I got rear-ended. Uh, I was bobtail. You got to slow down on, the, on these tragedies. You got to slow down. On this uh, this sounds like a, like a like a made for TV. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, I'm just the energizer by uh, energizer bunny. I just keep on going. And that is um, crazy. So that car hit me bobtail at I don't know 85 plus miles an hour. 
they went airborne and flipped over and then they skidded in front of me and went over to the um, center lane and I I thought they were dead. I, in fact, I was sure they had to be dead. It was so wow. bad. And then when they closed off the freeway and state patrol came up and that was my first thing was, I said, are they still alive? And um, they had fled the scene. That's just, I, that's crazy. I know. One of, my, one of my good friends from my car days, his, he and his family got in an accident in Texas, actually Louisiana, I'm sorry, on the interstate. Somebody hit him, demolished their car, hit him yeah. from behind. And they, they pulled away and went and ran. And it, they had to file their own insurance claim that the, the people left. It's crazy. Anyway, let's do this because we've covered a lot. Of, we've covered a lot of tragedies already with your neck brace. <laughs> yeah. Let's do this. Well, you do know what? You. This is good, though. This is actually um, I always try and find the good. And there's always good if you look for it. And the good is that it's really going to fix my neck. And so um, I'll have limited movement. I already had limited movement and it hurt. Now I'll have limited movement and it's not going to hurt. And be pain so, free. Yeah. How long do you got to wear that thing? Um, I don't know. I go back to the doctor um, on Monday, tomorrow, and they're, um, uh, they just took uh, x-rays of my neck. And so, sorry, I got um, some fruit flies <laughs> buzzing around. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I'll find out more. And I just finally got cleared to drive short distances. So, um, you know, so that was good. I went to the store. <laughs> so let's, let's, let's segue a little bit and step back. Cause some of the people on the channel now haven't watched your previous inter interviews. What did you do before? Well, number one, how long you've been truck driving? How long you've been CDL 18 wheels, big rig truck driving? How long has that been? I'm, uh, I'm working on my fifth year. And so, when, so fifth year. So I've been in it. You're, you're about a half a year or a year. A year behind me. Ten, yeah, I'm about a year behind you. Yeah. You'd been in just like right at a year, maybe a little bit under a year when I first found you. Okay. And what did you do before trucking? Because one of the things I love about your story, and I've got like three other women I'm trying to get up that I've been talking to for three, four years that have similar stories. Like you guys are just tough chicks. You guys just mm -hmm. don't, you don't cave. Like whatever hits you, just keep moving forward. And you've just done so well and reinventing yourself. So just tell the folks, what did you do before truck driving before five years ago? So I was being a stay at home mom. I was homeschooling Zane and I always have some side business going on. So I sell freeze dried food and I use it on my truck and I got some videos on, on that too. So, yeah. So <clears throat> you also built houses, right? Yeah. So before that, I, I mean, I've done a lot. Um, I've been a UPS driver, um, package cars, and uh, I've been a legal secretary, a radio announcer. I built homes. I had a handy mom business. So instead of handy man, I was mm -hmm. a handy mom. And um, yeah, I mean, whatever worked on a farm. I mean, I've done a lot. <laughs> what, what made you, what made you think about truck driving as a female because this is a business we all know dominated by men a lot of unhappy men at that most times what made you choose truck driving so well i was looking for something we were living in utah at the time and i was looking for something i could do at night because i'm just like a vampire by nature mm -hmm. and um that way i could um you know, work at night, even if it was just a, a crappy little job, $10 an hour or something didn't matter, just to help pay for Zane's um, medical bills. And um, I applied for everything. I mean, you know, if I could get paid good money for shoveling dog crap, I'd do that. I don't care. And um, I applied for the, um, I've fallen and I can't get up call center I, <laughs> I um because i had been a branch manager at a staffing agency and i even ran a, a three conference centers for a major medical company in seattle but nobody would hire me i mean i i applied to be a receptionist at a fitness club and um i applied to deliver donuts in the middle of the night i was a freaking ups driver um nobody would hire me really because I was overqualified and um, 
or I wasn't cute and perky enough, I guess, for the fitness center. I don't know. <laughs> they don't know well, what they're missing. <laughs> <laughs> well, the point about wanting you to share some of that is that like you've done everything in your life, whatever it took to, to survive as a woman, mm -hmm. as, as, a, as a mother raising a child, because, you know, we, in the last five years, you've also become a, a single parent. I know you mm -hmm. co-parent with your ex, mm -hmm. but it's pretty much been on you, even in trucking, like Zane's been at the house. Plus, Zane has some special needs some kids don't have on top of that. Right. Like you're, you have everything in the world worked against you this first five years, including somebody in the family who did not want you to get into trucking, who told you you were making a mistake, you shouldn't do it, blah, yep. blah, blah. You know, you had a lot of things. You want to share a, a little bit about Zane's medical uh, challenges? Yeah, sure. So um, Zane, um, well, he was kind of um, a professional whiny puke, um, didn't want to do chores, didn't want to do anything lazy. And um, so when I was homeschooling him, he, um, one of the things he was doing was swimming because he really loved swimming. So he was a swimming lessons. And then at the end of the swimming lessons, um, they would let him have free play. So he was doing cannonballs into the pool and he, he did this cannonball and he came up just screaming like there was a freaking shark in the pool or something. So we drug him out and, um, they actually called the, um, the ambulance and it really wasn't that red and they kind of felt around like it was probably maybe um, he bruised the bone or something. And then um, his feet were super flat and his ankles were turned in. So I had taken him to get um, an opinion on fixing that and they took x-rays and they, <laughs> so they asked me, oh, when did he break his leg? And at that moment, I mean, any parent can relate to this because when Zane had done that, I was like, get your butt up in there and do the dishes and quit, you know, whining and blah, blah, blah. And um, no pity. And he had broke his leg. And I felt like the worst mom in the entire world. And um, so three days before Christmas, um, they looked at it. They uh, said that they thought it was probably bone cancer. And they actually talked about um, possible double, double amputation at the How old at was he knees. at that point? How old was he at that point? He was um, 10 or 11, right around there. 10 or okay. 11. I think he was I mean, 10. I just wanted to put yeah. context in that because he's still a kid. He's still a child. He's still yeah, he's like 15. He's still, yeah, he needed all your attention. And yeah. this is happening. And you're about to jump into trucking. And, 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 and. But one of the cool things about you, like this super chick I've known now for you know coming up on four and a half years, you just refuse to lose. You just refuse to yeah. lose. And you don't make any excuses. You've mm -hmm. called me sometimes. We've talked sometimes where it's just been a bad day, but never where you call you're just, you know, weepy and crying and oh my gosh. No. You don't have that in you. Like you're just this tough chick. It's like, I'm just gonna power through this. What am I gonna do? I, my son needs me. I need yeah. me to be me for my son. Your mm -hmm. ex is involved, but he's not, you know, it's like you, it's all on you. You've been having to be there for the, the right. homework and get a, a job out and back. Cause who are you who mm -hmm. are you driving with, by the way? Um, then I was, I started driving with Warner. Um, now I drive with hub group, but one thing is, I, I mean, um, the, I don't want people to think that I never have a down day because I do. And believe me, when the doctors first said, you know, bone cancer, um, and then they later said, uh, bone eating disease, which I'm like, is that better? I mean, I don't know, I guess. Um, but I, I had, oh, believe me, I, I went and I bawled my eyes out, but that's, you, you got to get that out. And then you got to go, okay, how do I fix this? Zane, mm -hmm. if you ask Zane, he'll, he'll tell you. In fact, I asked him the other day, what does mommy do? Mommy fixes things. So, you know, <laughs> that's what I do. I fix stuff. I mean, I'm Hello. a handy mom and I fix things. So, you know, I started looking for ways to make it better. So I was looking at cool prosthetics and they have uh they actually have flippers you can get for swimming prosthetics when I thought they were going to possibly amputate. So I'm always looking for how do we make this better? How do we move forward? How do we got to always him? be looking at that. How do we find this 10 year old young man, the sunshine in his own life where this might be yeah. a situation that's going on? Well, let right. me ask you this. You jumped into trucking with Werner without getting super, super specific about Werner. Um, do me a favor and share with all the women out there that are not in trucking. Uh, mm -hmm. 
if you don't mind, like what were your concerns getting into this business? Because you were you were uh, you were a knockaround girl, like you did everything, including build yeah. houses. I mean, you were just willing to do whatever it took. I, mm -hmm. I got I got fruit flies in my room too. What's going on? <laughs> I sent I sent them to you. <laughs> what is going on? So it just came in my face. I'm like, oh, I'm in the matrix. <laughs> yeah. But but what were the things you were worried about? Uh, as a woman getting into truck driving, because, but again, you were a knock around girl. You're already done so much that most women would never consider doing. You just okay. put your, you just put your cap on, put the ponytail and just went after it. So what was trucking to you getting in the business as far as the fears you had? Um, really it was, it was, uh, well, my mother-in-law at the time, she'd been in trucking. She was adamant. One, I wasn't going to make any money. There's no money in trucking. Um, I was going to get harassed by men constantly, probably raped. Um, and, um, you know, that was kind of, that was the big things from her. And there was a little bit of, of that as far as my concern, but I've always been in male dominated industries and I've never had a problem. I mean, I like men. So, um, you know, I've found them to be more straightforward than women generally. So, um, <laughs> you've learned well. <laughs> yeah. You've learned I mean, well. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and I guess, um, honestly, my biggest concern was when we were in Ogden, there was a trucking school that um, would drive past the house we were living at, and I'd see them turn in the corner. And I just remember thinking, oh my God, how do they do that? it's easy. <laughs> they just, they tell you, they teach you how to do it. It's nothing, you know, I mean, you gotta pay attention, but you know, that was my bit. How am I going to turn a corner in one of those big giant trucks? Mm -hmm. So did you ever, did you ever drive team in the first five years? Have you ever driven team? Just when I was with my trainer. That so was other it. than that, it's all been, it's all been on you. The reason I asked that question is because mm -hmm. you got out of the trainer's truck. How long was the training with Warner, by the way? Um, the training with Warner was right around six weeks and okay. I got nothing bad to say at all about um, Warner. And I think they're a good training company. And I still, I just talked to my, um, my trainer, uh, Andre the other day. So <laughs> I'm still well, friends with them. He's a great guy. <clears throat> well, the reason I asked is because even six weeks, like my training with GNP was four weeks. It doesn't, it doesn't really prepare you. Like you all no. of a sudden they throw you the keys and you're on your own in the next load and you've had six weeks, but it, it goes like that. At least for me, it really I, woke up, I woke up one day and Brandon's getting out of the truck <laughs> and I had a lot of life experience. So I wasn't scared, but it was, it was a little bit of anxiousness because now it's on me. I got this big old tractor behind the trailer behind me and now it's me and it's just four mm -hmm. weeks. You had yeah. six. That's one, that's one of the reasons I still like prime because they have a good two, three months with somebody with you to yep. really let you see all the looks, but you're worried about it being a male dominated environment, worried about your safety. What about the money? Did the money work out for you the way you thought it was going to so far? Cause I know with hub, you've been very happy, but uh, starting yeah. out, we don't need to talk about Werner in a bad way, but was no. it enough for you to make your way? Um, it was surprisingly more than what I had been told by my mother-in-law. So basically, she was like, you're going to work for free, you're going to be out for months, and you'll never see your family. Well, that wasn't really true. So I mean, I, I, I was making between uh, 40 and 45,000. So it wasn't it wasn't huge money. But no, I know during that time period, you and Drew, your ex were still working things out and you were finishing mm -hmm. the divorce. You were taking, you know, no, pretty much we, initially that it was a year into it. And then he oh. texted me. He wanted a divorce. OK, so you're in the middle of all that. Yeah. And that's an emotional thing. I mean, even for me, this, this week's been kind of unique, even though I'm the one that asked for the divorce. It's been a very unique week emotionally. Right. And I almost, I almost need to get back in the truck at this point. Like I need <laughs> to get back. In the, you know what I'm saying? I need to get yeah. back in the truck doing some work. Um so make it driving across country for me was not a good decision. I should have flown back, should have sold my car in Charlotte like I was planning on doing. But I thought, no, let me let me just drive and enjoy the scenery. Wrong, wrong decision. I should have been in the Too, truck. I call it windshield time. Too much windshield time to sit there and think uh, all by yourself. Yeah, well, it, it is. It is. You're going through all that. You're leaving a relationship. You, you know, in your case, you had a child with that relationship. 
-hmm. you're jumping into a whole new business that is kind of taking you away from the house more than most regular right. mothers. It is. It is. You know, mm -hmm. and so all of that. But you you just powered through. You powered through because you already saw like the, the times we talked about the next steps. You mm -hmm. saw the money. You just needed to get to that experience level. Right. I just wanted I I had listened to this guy <laughs> on YouTube say, you know, get at least do your year, preferably two, and then you can do whatever you want. And that was true. You're listening to somebody else, but other than me, you're cheating on me. Are you cheating on me? <laughs> no, that was you. That was you. <laughs> no, no. I know. I was I was looking for a compliment. That's all. Of course, that's. Uh, I did. I did what you said. I mean, you were doing it. You know. So, and and here's the thing. Um, whenever I'm gonna do something, whether it's be, a, a, I mean, years ago, I had I was in a relationship. Um, there was a. Um, ready-made family. And so I looked up um, and started researching about blended families. I mean, I'd been a kid in a bl blended family, but I wanted to find out how to make blended families work. Mm -hmm. And um, so when I went in, when I was going to have a baby, I had Zane, I was 43 years old, who starts wow. a family at 43. So I looked at, you know, the things that are um, hazards and uh, issues to deal with um, on being a uh, older parent. And of course, mentally, um, you know, I, I'm 28 in my brain. So, you know, oh, you are, I you are. Listen, I, will, I will vouch for that <laughs> mentally when I talk like you're a 20 year old. You're just you're wide open in all the all the right ways as a person conquering life. So I, I yeah. agree with that. But go ahead. Go ahead. Let so, me let you talk. Um, you know, so. <laughs> So that that's, you know, that's kind of where I was at with that. And then when I was going to get into trucking. So the other thing I did was and my my sister, um, Shireen, who I just adore, she was in the background cheering me on saying, you can do this, Linnell, you can do this. And so um, we would look up different companies and we'd look at um, all the comments online about them, the good and the bad and their ranking as far as who to work for. And, and when I make a decision, then it doesn't mean it's set in stone, but it means I've made a decision, I'm moving forward, unless there's something huge warning sign that says, you know, uh, don't do it, you know, then, then I'm willing to still look at other things. But initially, you make a decision, you've got to follow through. So that's what I did with trucking. And even though I was hearing these bad things, um, it, that was from one person. But then I was listening to you. And there was another couple that I really like, they're not in trucking anymore, but um, they were loving it. And, um, you know, I was like, I don't know. I think this is for me. I mean, I didn't see really any downside. And well, let me let me you know jump nothing in. ventured, me, nothing gained. That's let how me, I just, let me life. jump in real quick too, because you said you made a you made a point there that's a very salient point. You had somebody in your immediate family. We won't we don't need to mention who in case you know anybody's watching. Mm -hmm. You might have already you might have already squeaked out of your when you were talking, but I didn't hear you say who it was. But this person is that's the closest. They were close to you. They didn't. They, they talked to you. They were trying to talk you off of what your vision was. And I hate when people like your family can be some of the worst of the worst of the worst because they just know you of who you've been to them. Right. They don't. They don't see the wide open world. It's like the world's waiting on you to come conquer it. Why are you still sitting at home? Mm -hmm. They don't see that. They're because they're scared to go make the move. And scared scared women raise scared babies. Mm -hmm. Believe me when I know that. Yeah. And they won't even leave the room. They won't even go get a job. So listen, you you just went and did it. And yeah. you, even with all the people in your family telling you no, you're like, I don't care what you say. I'm going to go do it. And it wasn't easy. 45 to 55, like I tell people, some of these companies. Now, did you owe them back the money or did you pay for your own CDO? No, I got it through. Uh, it was a grant at, mm -hmm. in Utah for a displaced homemaker. So it cost yeah. me nothing. The whole, the school was, cost me nothing and they paid the money out for um, the CDL license. The only thing that cost me extra was what, uh, listening to you and I got my hazmat double uh, triples and my tanker endorsement. Well, That's you the know, only thing that cost me out of pocket. And you know, girl, you know that Brothers Grimm, we're, we, like you need your hazmat. I got to go get mine when I have, when I have a, yeah. the next break because 
we're about to sign a contract with the hazmat company and it's going to be good. So you need to get mm-hmm. your, uh, but let me ask you this. So you've been driving five years. You just went and did it. Um, let's back up. Let's back up to the, to the young girl. And now mm-hmm. journey into trucking.com. Let me put that back in the, in the comments here. This is, if you, if you go to that website, it drives you to her YouTube channel, journey into trucking plus you see it right there on the screen, but it's journey into trucking.com. Let's go back because this, this is where I wanted to get you back up. Like you told me this this week and I've choked up a couple of times talking to you and not talking to you, driving down the road myself <laughs> thinking you had your own mother in your ear from a very early time period yeah. telling you that you weren't going to amount to anything in life. And you were chewing yeah. on that your whole life while you're trying to rebuild your life, especially as a more mature woman with a child on the ground, going through a divorce, things aren't working out. And it's easy to, it's easy to, to translate all of those negative things to see she was right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. It's right. easy. Right. It's easy to internalize that and go, yeah. she was right. See, but you won't tell people that you're thinking that, but you're thinking that. And it wasn't right. You want to no. share a little bit of that, the story, because you told me, you told me some things last night in the pre-interview that you got some some therapist vision from that just blew mm-hmm. my head apart like in a good way I just I was like wow you want to share yeah. some of that with the audience now that's watching yeah um so my mom um well she just passed and um why do people say passed she died um and um I was an only child um talk about my sister she's from my dad and my stepmother's um marriage but I grew up an only child with my mom and um she had um some mental illness going on um never diagnosed but the counseling that I was in um the counselors thought she was probably um border or borderline personality disorder and um bipolar and all I know know is did you know any of this that is like up to you were 30 or 35 did you did you comprehend any of that no, uh uh-uh. uh. So you, I, you um, just thought you were let me I I'm I'm cutting you off and I I mean okay. I mean I mean to cut you off because I want to slow this okay. down. You were just living with the woman that, that was your mother. You didn't have any like you didn't get a, a choice of I want to I want to go to door A or door B coming out of yeah. life. You right. were just given that door. You came out, you're in that life, yeah. and you thought that was whatever like like what I talk about in my background coming up in, mm-hmm. in my own home. I thought that was normal. I thought when the doors closed, all hell broke loose in every family. And I <laughs> yeah. thought women were getting thrown across the room and children were getting beat and the, the alcoholic stepfather. I thought that was normal because no yeah. one told me any different. Yeah. So you you went all those years thinking your mom telling you that you were no good was normal. Like that's what every parent does. Well and it was weird because it was always Either I was the most amazing, wonderful child in the world, and I could do anything I wanted to do, or I was um, a huge disappointment. Um, she didn't want to be my mother anymore, and um, you know, I, I was a horrible human being, a deplorable, and a disappointment. You know, and I got the "you're just like your father." Well. But the thing about that was she would lie to me about people. So she would lie about things with my dad. So I thought my dad was a horrible person. And she would lie about my aunt and um, her sister, who she said was a horrible person. And, you know, um, she wasn't. And so, but you don't know that when you're a little kid growing up in that household, you think, like you said, you think everybody, it's all crazy. You think that, you know, every parent comes up to you with no warning. You're sitting eating breakfast and dumps a pitcher of water over the top of your head before you go to school. You, oh, my gosh. That just gave me chills <laughs> over my whole body. I, I just got I just got triggered. I meant to go off camera for a minute. Oh, my God. Wow. You know, I'm like, okay. But I was really lucky because um, – I had, I swear to God, my, my second grade teacher, when we lived in California, um, Mrs. Smith, she, um, I was a terrible speller. I'm still a bad speller, but um, you, thank God dys- for spell do check. Have, do you have dyslexia? No, I just don't spell well. Okay. <laughs> it's, just, it's just, you know, it's not my strong suit. Mm-hmm. And um, so she told me if I come in early that, and practice spelling, um, that I could help with the bulletin boards. And 
So I did, and then I would practice spelling, and I started getting A's on my spelling test every Friday. And then I'd come in earlier and earlier. So I came in so early that I was sitting at dusk on the steps, and the janitor would let me in, and I'd help the other teachers. So she taught me if if you make a good effort, um, that will be rewarded, and doing good. You get, I mean, it's like, my name is Earl, you know, you do good and good things happen, you know, right. so. <laughs> right. Well, let's go back to that. Up to, when did you realize that what, because you also, you also told me a point your therapist told you on how to realize what you were coping with looking back, because your mom yeah. just passed away and you went to her bedside and forgave her the last moment she was on earth. You went to, your, to her bedside and held her hand, being the only child, being the one that was told your whole life, you're a disappointment, you're not who I thought you were gonna be, you're not gonna amount to a thing. You didn't, like, to you, that was just how, how a mother talked to her kid. And you yeah. went, you went, you went yeah. and held her hand while she left the earth in the last three weeks. Yeah. You wanna, you wanna share with the audience watching now or later? Because listen, all you folks that are watching now or later, hold on, let me put myself on camera just for a second now. Okay. All you folks that are watching now or later, this next this next point, you need to understand what she's about to say. I'm going to get choked up. Is the most true thing I've heard in probably 15 years about mental illness. This is the most true thing I've heard. Miss Linnell, you want to share this, please? What your therapist yeah. told you? Gave you time to yeah. put a light on, too. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I was getting dark. <laughs> um, so... Um, what he told me, so I, I was, I was dealing with abandonment issues too, um, because my mom had written me a letter. Um, I had gotten hurt at UPS. I um, was in a bad relationship, one of those toxic ones. And, uh, um, and anyway, that's when I ran away to Arkansas with a blackjack dealer from Reno. <laughs> Was but, he a good? Um, was he a good blackjack dealer? That's the question. Was he making any money? Yeah, he taught he taught me how to count cards. So <laughs> allegedly um, taught you how to count cards. <laughs> allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. That was back in the good old days when there was allegedly. only like uh, double and triple decks. Now yeah. it's like fifteen. So, yeah. but anyway, um, also that um, my dad, um, he, I, I went to my youngest uh, half sister's wedding. And um, there was some ladies came up. I'm standing there talking to my dad and they're saying, um, oh, how beautiful the wedding was and all that, um, which was fine. And then they talked about the cost. And he said, now mind you, I have two half sisters and I'm the oldest. And um, he and I'm standing right next to him. And he says, uh, he says, yeah, I'm really glad I only have two daughters. And. Then he looked at me and realized what he just said. And he said, honey, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it like that. But to me, that was very telling. He has two daughters that he wants or um, two real daughters. You know, what does that make me? And that was devastating. And then um, I was living in, in Portland. This was probably the lowest point, one of the lowest points in my life. I was totally alone and um, I'd gotten back from Arkansas. That remarkably did not work out well. With the blackjack um, dealer. Yeah. <laughs> well, you gambled on life, girl. You gambled on I, life. I had fun. I had fun though. So, um, and, um, and so I wrote to my dad. I told him that um, I felt like he wished I'd never been born and I, would not contact him, that I'd leave that up to him if he wanted me in his life. And I didn't hear from him. And, um, and then I got a letter from my mom telling me that um, uh, I was the worst human being that had ever been born. And I was too, I was so selfish and self-centered. And uh, she didn't want to be my mother anymore. And she had found this other family that um, she was adopting. And um, so there I sat, and honestly, the only reason I didn't uh, seriously, I mean, I've never been so alone in my whole life, and um, I really did want to die, but I had this really cool old orange cat, Pooh Bear, that um, if I wasn't there, nobody would take care of Pooh like I did, and I loved him, and... Uh, 
at that point, poo was my reason for living, honestly. I didn't have anything else. So um, when I did go into counseling, because later my mom um, did all sorts of, uh, oh, my dog wants in. <laughs> Let him in. That's um, fine. Let him in. Let him okay. In. Hang on. Know. Hang on. Hang on. Let him in. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, While she's gone, I need you guys to really pay attention to this next part. We took a little bit deeper. Yeah. Her therapist, what her therapist told her, is going to save you, some of you folks, tens of thousands of hours laying on the couch and maybe tens of thousands of dollars telling your story. If you if you hear what she's about to tell you, her therapist said about her mother, who she thought was normal to be told you're you're a, you're a waste of flesh, you you shouldn't be alive. I don't like you. You're not going to amount to anything. Like those are all things I heard coming up, and my mother never stepped in and defended any of it. You know, my brother and I didn't know what to do. We weren't we weren't invited to the party. We were we were sold to the party with her. You know, we didn't know what we were in the middle of. I look back and I think, man, what? I'm like I wouldn't let they're not my beagles anymore. I'm going to get new dogs and a new relationship. But the, I, I wouldn't let my dogs be talked to that way, much less my kids. And my mother never stepped between it. She never stopped. Mm -hmm. it. She couldn't because she's she was mentally ill. I've seen a lot of mental illness this last couple of years. And what she's about to say is going to save some of you folks watching this. Please share this video because this next clip, if all you do is clip out this next part about what her therapist told her about her mom and how to process and how to comprehend what her mother was telling her as a child, it's going to save some of you guys and some of the people in your family thousands and thousands of hours on some therapist couch trying to figure stuff out. You want to share that? Let me know what your therapist told you. Yeah. So um, the biggest thing is when, like we talked about when you're a kid, you don't know that you're being fed a bunch of lies. You're being fed somebody else's reality. And in this case, my mom's reality was crazy. Mm -hmm. And um, so, and because why would your mom lie to you? They wouldn't. So you believe them or your dad or whoever it is. Well, you don't know um, any better as a kid. You don't know any better. You don't You're know. You're a kid. You're a kid. Yeah. You don't know any. You're already dealing with all the stuff at school. Like I was a, I was a redheaded, freckled faced, you know, eyeglass wearing kid. I was good at sports, good enough to get him to lay off me. But it was still I was a redheaded stepchild, freckle faced kid. You, I mean, you're already dealing with that at school. But I would right. come home, Linnell, and I would deal with a thousand times worse. That's why this that's why all this peer pressure online doesn't bother me a bit. Because yeah. if I if you can deal with that from your own your own family who's supposed to be your biggest supporter, what are you mm -hmm. gonna say to me to hurt my feelings outside the doors of that house? Anyway, back to you, young lady. Back to you. Yeah. So um a chain of events happened and I ended up um in some counseling. Um and the counselor that I went to. He, um, two things, he, he gave me this button. I still have it. And it says, uh, if you're close enough to read this, you're too close back the F off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so one, especially as women, you need to set boundaries. So that's mm -hmm. one. Um, the second thing was in dealing with my mom. Um, oh, should I show the picture of my mom? Yes, you please do. That's your mom. That's, Gorgeous. She's that's, a good looking that's woman my too. mom. She's, She's beautiful. Woman. She, she really like is. Barbara. She looks like Barbara Mandrell. So big smile and um, just a lot of really amazing qualities. But um, the one that wasn't was the crazy. And what he told me was you need to detach from essentially labels. So when uh, my mom would do stuff, I needed to think about her as Carol. So which was her real and not, name. Which is her real name and not not my mom because you know um like when uh, before I had Zane um I miscarried a baby. It was right around Christmas and she said, "Well, you deserve to lose that baby cuz you're too selfish and self-centered to to be a mom." So what mother says that it will drive you crazy and so what he said was that's carol so you have to look at that behavior and say that's carol that's normal for carol and it's not surprising it's hurtful but you know that's how it is so that's how i had to deal with her i had to be guarded which was unfortunate because i never had i had that closeness with my aunt um, my mom's sister, who she told me was a horrible human being. Um, but that was the biggest thing was I, 
we joked around a lot about my friends, uh, even um, Drew, my my ex husband, about you know, well, this you know, wh how, what's going on with your mom? She love you or hate you? You know, so it was like, ah, she hates me right now. But you know, in a couple of months, she might love me. But I never closed the door on her. You can't, you know. She she had she did the best she could. She did the best that she could. With and the mental, with well, let's let's clarify this. She did the best she could with her mental illness because you mm -hmm. were having to understand it was Carol, the mentally ill woman, yeah. speaking, mm -hmm. not the mother that you were supposed like. Bears will go kill somebody for walking within 20 yards of their cubs. They will yeah. go kill you. They will go chew you up and kill you. Right. Some of the some of this mental illness in families nowadays, the mother won't, I mean, it's useless. It's useless. It's terrible. Yeah. You know? And it, and it's unfortunate. But the thing is, if if I hated her, if I had it closed off my life to her, then um it would really only hurt me. Mm -hmm. I'd be the one losing out. And um, because she did do a lot of things right. She really did. Um, the times when she told me I was awesome and I could do anything I wanted to do, those are the things that I hang on to. I let the other stuff go. You, you just don't hang on to that bad stuff. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing. You just keep the good stuff and let the bad stuff go. And um, and so that's really what I, what I did with her. And, you know... Because she was so on again, off again, um, she she had 20 acres. She didn't have much. She could never hold a job because she was always paranoid. You know, the boss was hot for her. Or the other women were jealous of her. And so she'd get fired and, or quit and, and all that. Um, she had 20 acres in eastern Washington that was supposed to be mine. And she changed her will every few years, you know, if she loved me, then I was getting everything. If uh, she was pissed, then she, you know, write me out of the will. And so this last time, um, she was pissed at me. And so I didn't go to see my mom um, to get anything. I got nothing out of it. There was no monetary anything. Hmm. I went because she's my mom. My cousin kind of horned in and that she became the perfect daughter that I could never be. And so she gets everything. Um, but. Well, that, so what? that, 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 that <laughs> tip about looking at mentally ill people and referring to them as their name versus whatever mm -hmm. relationship, mother, father, husband, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, lover, Rather than referring to it as a relationship to the person, mm -hmm. that that alone, that right there is just it's just it, stunning. It's stunning yeah, because it, all of us it really this, helps you. Well, then then you comprehend like by your by your saying their name rather than the relationship or honey mm -hmm. or darling or you know gorgeous or baby doll whatever whatever pet names you <laughs> use for your lovers even your your wife or husband. Right, you you then you then you're looking at them as whatever their name is going. I'm talking now to the mentally ill person who has no concept of reality, right. who is doing yeah. everything against what the natural laws of raising a family should be to make the, the children successful. But right. I, now I'm dealing with the mental illness person. Mm -hmm. When you told me that the other night, I don't even what, what is today? Sunday? Is today Sunday? Yeah, Sunday. I think you told me that Wednesday or Thursday on my drive back, girl. And I thought about that for the next 48 hours. Because if I didn't know, mm -hmm. I'd have thought about that. I would have saved myself so much confusion in my yeah. life. And I'm only yeah. 40. I mean, you're older than I am. I'm only 40. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You, know? <laughs> you know, that new do scared. makes you look younger. Well, I've heard that. I've heard that. It feels good too. Let me tell you, it's big changes call for big changes. But uh, like just that, just that, that nugget, like I'm, I choked up last night when you and I were talking about this. I was here in the hotel choking up to you talking about because I'm like, that is a powerful, powerful frame of reference to, to regain all the control about why are you being why why are you abusing right. me? I'm right. the person, I'm the person that I'm here for you. Yeah. And you're abusing me. I didn't choose any of this. Right. But you're abusing me and telling me what I'm not and who I'm not and how I'm not. And and I'm just like, I didn't. Get, I, I'm your kid. I didn't like sit in heaven and go, you know, I'll take uh, A or B. Lavanna, what's behind door D? You didn't have that. You just <laughs> no. came out. 
No. It's, it's so terrifying for a kid to look back and go, you know what? I wasted so many years in utter confusion and evil and mm -hmm. mental illness. Mm -hmm. You know, anyway, I, I went on a little bit of a rant there. I'm sorry. But that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> so the thing, the thing is, um, one, I didn't go, uh, I didn't go there because um, uh, I was going to get something. Um, when I called her, when I found out, cause I was kind of not fully in the loop, they were calling my cousin and then my cousin would call my uncle and then my uncle would call me. So there was a delay in getting information about my mom and I had just had the surgery. So I was doped up on some awesome drugs. So, um, I didn't really, you know, I was kind of in and out of it. I feel but, you. Um, I feel you. Yeah. I feel you. Have fun however you can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, I called her and then it was a terrible phone call. Um, she was in the hospital and then she just started on me and saying, uh, well, you abandoned me and you don't care about me. You're like everybody else. You don't care about me. And I was just like, Oh, brother. And I said, okay, mom, well, I'm going to let you go. And I hung up and I thought, well, that's it. And then um, I went ahead, I called her again and it was actually a good call. And um, she said, I don't think you're going to make it here before I die. And, and I said, I'm going to do everything I can to get there, mom. And you just and gone I, through your surgery. You'd gone through your surgery last yeah. month, a month ago, six weeks ago? Two. It was only, yeah, it was two weeks out when I talked to her on the phone. And so um, I, my sister, uh, Shireen, um, my awesome cheerleader, she apparently called my dad and told me because he knew. So here's the other thing. It is really beneficial if you have a sibling, which I didn't have, who experienced the same kind of abuse or another family member who suffered uh, at the hands of that person. So I had my aunt and I had my dad um, and me knew what my mom was really like. And um, my dad called me and um, he said to me, on the phone, he said, uh, honey, I'm probably going to get choked up. He said, um, I probably, he says, I admire you more than anybody else in the world. He said, you are so strong and you are so sweet and so smart and I am so proud of you. And I hadn't heard that from him. And that's all I ever wanted growing up was, sorry, my voice is scratchy. Too I, don't know who's cut, I don't know who's cutting onions. I guess it's those, it's those fruit flies cutting onions in the kitchen. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but hearing him say that was something I'm always going to hold on to. And, um, um, and then I talked to my sister and I said, you know what? She may have temporarily chosen Karis as her daughter, but you know what? Me. I'm the only daughter. She's my mom. She's nobody else's mom, and I'm going. So I went and I, I talked to the doctor, and um, he told me to go ahead and go. And so I went, and I had the three most amazing days with my mom. And I'm so glad I went. It meant everything uh, to me to, to do that and be there for her. And, you know, the last word she said to me was Friday night was, um, cause she loved the hospital forgot to bring her her dinner one day. And then she, the food they were giving her was horrible. So she'd hear me on the phone, you know, say, no, no, she doesn't want that. So she had me advocating for her and just doing little things that were comforting to her. And, um, you know, and then she said on Friday night, she said, uh, I said, okay, I'm going to go, mom. I'll see you tomorrow. I got your breakfast all set up. She said, oh, okay, honey. I said, I love you, mom. And she says, I love you too, sweetheart. And she 
went to sleep that night, Friday night, and never woke up again. But I was there to hold her hand and, and um, you know, she had labored breathing. I tried singing to her, but my voice box is messed up, so I can't, like, do <laughs> much. So, um, so I decided to quit singing to her because it might scare her or something. <laughs> and then well, um, it's just it's a powerful story of redemption. And I wanted to get you on and tell you this, tell the story because this week has been like I've, I've thought a lot about all of this mental mm -hmm. illness and separating the person by their name versus whatever, yeah. whatever emotional name that they are in your life, husband, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, lover, friend. People with mental illness don't even know what they're doing. They don't even comprehend right. the, the effects they're having on people. They don't even comprehend how they're destroying people's lives by whatever they're saying or not saying. Because right. because the mental illness gets in the way. Yeah. And hearing that, like when you said that, I just it, it just set me back. Like I don't I don't yeah. get set back by a lot, but I got set back by that tip your therapist gave you was to start referring to her as Carol, not as your mom. Yep. And when you yep. think about those situations, if I take that piece of advice and I go back through every year of my life, mm -hmm. it gives me so much peace. Now, have I, do I have some mental illness? I don't know. I don't know. I think, <laughs> I think we all have a little bit of edge. Sure. But, I just, but one of the things I've found in my life is I get told, stop talking about that, about the mental illness in families versus handling it. And that's oh. where I lose all interest. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You can't tell me that this is normal. No, 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 no. You can't tell me to shut up. No, 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 no. And so I, I approach that differently. I just, your story about your upbringing and hearing that for all those years and, and just overcoming it. Now you're in trucking. Now let's say this. You've been in trucking now five years. What did you do in this last couple of years that... Um, didn't you just buy a house from the, the money truck driving provided you? Didn't you just buy a house? I bought a bike, a motorcycle. <laughs> are you a, are you a biker chick? <laughs> I'm actually going to sell it, but um, I just I don't want to drive it around Dallas Fort Worth. It's um, my my son is back. Get your face in there. There he Zane, is. <laughs> Zane's gotten big. Zane, you gotten big, bro. <laughs> I remember him standing behind you when you, we did the last video two years ago, I think, and he stood behind you and he was like this little 11 year old, 12 year old. I know, I know. Um, so, yeah, I, it's um, Dallas Fort Worth is combat driving. It is really, really bad. Um, I just don't want to drive my bike around here. So I'm going to sell it. But um, yeah, I bought my house and um, I got you money believe in the. Would you ever believe you could jump in a business and within three years, four years, buy a house from the income and like your own place? You're not no man signed for that with you. It was you. You did that. Right. Well, everything I did, no man signed for me. <laughs> I wasn't implying they did. I wasn't <laughs> I'm just saying that most women make their moves. I shouldn't say most. That's being very general. A lot. A lot of a lot of women rely on a, on the main source of income being the man in America. Truck driving that it levels that field. You come out here and truck driving. If you can, if you enjoy now, you enjoy the business of truck driving. You enjoy this, enjoy the solitude. Oh, You're a very I independent miss, woman. Yeah, I got right here. I'm still my love's jug. You can hardly tell it's a love's <laughs> jug anymore. That's, I'm that's keeping a cooler. It. That's a cooler. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I keep it. I'm keeping it warmed up for. Uh, when I can get back in the driver's seat. Oh, I miss it a lot. Well, I've realized this week I should never have driven back across country. I should have sold the car that I was going to. I have it parked at, at Brad's uh, house because I got to take off early in the morning and I can't go sell it today at CarMax. They're closed on, on Easter Sunday. Ah. But I should have I should have flown back out and just jumped in the truck because that's where I find my I find my peace. And I and I and I find my peace like young Chase made two grand last week, his first week with us. Young Chase, 24 yeah. years old. He made just yeah. just under twenty one hundred dollars last week. First week driving mm -hmm. with Brothers Grimm, and he mm -hmm. drove team with me, and we weren't even in the rhythm yet. Like the first couple of loads, we we're kind of doing seventy five percent because I wanted to make sure he was good and the process, etc. Life change. Twenty four years old made made just under twenty one hundred bucks last week. I know this business. I can't be a big enough trumpeteer about this business. If you if it suits you, if you need if it people, suits you. If yeah. you need people, if you need, you know, you need that reinforcement from a boss to say, good job, this might not be the job for you. I've never needed Well, that. but you, you can get it from, I mean, um, 
of course, I'm in a different situation because I'm not technically I'm not OTR. I'm um, overnight regional. So mm -hmm. I do see my DM. He sends me messages. And, you know, so I do get feedback from Ken. And Ken is a great DM. But um, I'm also one of his um, best drivers. And I know that because he told me. And um, so, yeah, I mean, you can get that. You can also tell when what kind of loads you're getting. I mean, if you're getting the the uh, the hot loads, the ones that have to be there, that's because you're the driver they're depending on, and uh, they know they can count on you. If you're not getting those kind of loads, then uh, you might want to evaluate. You know what you're doing or taking, maybe that's what you want maybe maybe you don't want to be a high performer you're taking you high frequency on holidays off listen that's fine too you're right people can be an average truck driver making 45 55 65 a year that's average income for a mm -hmm. truck driver it's still better than most people's income but you're going to be gone if you're home every i didn't like being home every day i didn't like having to do that hour trip each way to the, that's brutal home yeah, daily had, is brutal and you had to get I home think. and help help zane with his homework and do all that stuff all the mom stuff on top of yeah you know, i mean you stop so when you do that so you got 24 hours a day and you got a 14 hour work day and then i had an hour commute each way so that on that 10 hours now i have eight well you're supposed to sleep eight hours well, what if I stop at the grocery store on the way home and mm -hmm. then I get home, I unload that stuff and I do meal prep and stuff like that. And, you know, I need to be a mom and, and annoy my teenage boy and embarrass him and stuff like that. That takes time. And so now it always cuts into your sleep. So then you're sleep deprived. Allegedly, and allegedly sleep. Allegedly, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. Yeah. Well, listen, the reason I want to get you up, we're, we're almost at an hour, young lady. Like it's it's almost been an hour. This has been a therapy session for me. Yeah. Listen to you tell your story to all the people out there. If they took nothing else out of this video, start separating the person from the relationship about the yeah. mental illness. Call It'll them by their, call them by their name. And understand right. it's all around you. You're like, Linnell, you and I talk, it's all around you. People in your life are mentally ill. They have a yeah. complete warped perception about reality and they, they will sell you their vision if you let them. Mm -hmm. I just don't let them. And I try to tolerate it, especially with somebody I love and care about. But at the end of the day, I'm like, no, 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 you're no, there's a well, lot of stuff wrong with this. You also you need you need to you need to be your own best friend. You need to take steps to protect yourself. So, um, you know, like with my mom, what what I did was um, I would, when she was in her crazy time or being mean, I just quit calling. I wasn't giving her the silent treatment. What I was doing was protecting myself, but I didn't close the door on her. So during the year, sometimes she was mad at me for over a year, but um, I would still send her birthday presents, Christmas, you know, all those different holidays. And I'd have my son call and talk to her. And because I wanted that him to have that relationship with her. And I also wanted to show him that I still was honoring my mother. I mean, again, we talked about whether you're religious or not. The Ten Commandments, even if you're not religious, is a good guide. And honor your father and mother. You don't, it doesn't say love them. Mm -hmm. Although I did, I did love the good parts of my mom, but um, I needed to honor her. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's what I felt like I was doing is honoring her and honoring the good that she gave me because she did give me a lot of good. And I learned how to be resourceful because of her mental illness mm -hmm. and never being able to keep a job. We were always poor, you know, making do. So it made I me have, a survivor. I, when I began realizing that I wouldn't trade it a day of all the abuse I took coming up and all the mental illness in my own house, including the codependent mother who allowed it to happen, because that codependency, even, even with mothers and their kids, where you allow stuff to happen that is so absurd and so mentally ill, that codependency, you can't break that bond. Like nobody mm -hmm. can break that bond. And the, the more I, I look back, I'm like, you know what, if I would have just known to start calling people by their direct name, 
Mm-hmm. Because then you're dealing with an individual. You're not dealing with mom, dad, love, yeah. friend, you know, brother, sister, uh, wife, That's husband. That's Carol. That's normal for Carol. It's not unexpected. And so, you know, that's okay. Well, that's that, that if we get nothing else, like you're just, just you telling me that the other night, it just changed my whole rest of my drive. It did. Yeah. Because yeah. dealing with mental illness, it's odd because like you're in it and you see it and you smell mm-hmm. it and you feel it, mm-hmm. but you're convinced by the other person. It's not mental illness. It's just how we're going to do business. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah. no, we're not. No, that's not how Scotty <laughs> plays. No, <laughs> no. Yeah. You know, and, and I, you're you're just a tough like you. You've been that same. I'm going to say girl, even though I know you're a woman, been that same girl since I since I first began talking to you in trucking, just tough as nails, just refuses to lose, gets back up. You like like Zane says, you know, you're, you fix things, but yeah. you also hold him accountable. Like you also, yeah. you know, anyway, listen. You've been so sweet. We're at a minute, an hour and one minute into this stream, young lady. And it's been it feels like it's been 10 minutes. And I appreciate you making the time. Well, I hope that um, some people are helped by it. Trucking is an amazing industry. I don't know any other uh, program, occupation that you can go in and after six weeks in getting your CDL, that you can go in. And even if you're only making 45000 the first year, so what? That's a good, that's okay. That's so, see, my voice is cracking. I'm going through puberty as well. So, um, (laughs) but I mean, it is, and it's great for women. There's more women coming on. Um, the truck it's power steering. It doesn't matter how big the steering wheel is or how small it, you know, you can palm it even. So, I mean, it doesn't matter. Um, and it, it's just a really great industry, and um, I love it. But, yeah, you ha- it has to be right for you. And um, don't listen to other people. Um, do your own homework. Especially my biggest thing was um, what kind of soured me initially was all the bad um, comments I would see on YouTube or on different websites. And most of those bad comments, I think, are from people who – um didn't do the work or you know what for whatever reason um that they couldn't perform or they stopped at too many truck stops along you know during the day or whatever it was they weren't making the money um because i haven't had a problem making money and um what's your ballpark what's your ballpark right now ballpark with hub group uh 80 90 Driving the tractor trailer, you're, you're, come on, girl, come on, I'm, come on, come and that's on. with amazing benefits too. My this neck surgery um, would have cost me uh, over fifty thousand dollars, and uh, I got Blue Cross Blue Shield. I got great insurance. I also paid the extra on the advice of uh, another trucker. Said get pay for your short and long term disability. So I'm still getting a check, but you know what? I have money in the bank. This is the first time I've ever had money in the bank. It's only with trucking, only with trucking. Well, thank you. So, thank you for getting on, sharing your story, sharing your heartache, sharing the, the just that one nugget about just call them by the real name. Stop referring mm-hmm. to them as, as the emotional relationship in your life. Call them by their yeah. name. Mm-hmm. That is huge. That is huge. It's yep. huge because then you realize, you know what? I'm not dealing with somebody who is a real mother, father, lover, friend, husband, wife. Mm -hmm. I'm dealing with a mentally ill person. So I got to deal with them as a person, not as somebody who's emotionally. That's just beautiful. It's beautiful. Thank you so much for making the time on a Sunday, on Easter Sunday, no less. (laughs) No problem. I hope it helps somebody. Thank you very much, Ms. Linnell. And again, folks, here's her. If you you go to this website, journeyintotrucking.com, it takes you right to her YouTube channel. Um, she'll be back in the seat, probably be up at Brothers Grimm sometime soon. Um, I'm once hoping get so. Up. I think Chase's mom is coming over in the next week or two. Uh, oops. Allegedly coming over in the next week or two. Allegedly. <laughs> Save so, me a truck. <laughs> so we got some great things going on and in this is a gorgeous area. This is just, this is, this oh, is. Oh, I know. That's this, my stomping know. ground. That's where I grew up. Yeah, you know, we actually, when I did that Snow Call Me Pass video, you sent me a text about it. <laughs> I know. God, it's so beautiful up there. 
it is. Well, listen, thank you again, Linnell, for getting on here. Get on back to the family. Get on back to, to Zane. And uh, I will. Don't, ever, don't ever stop being a friend to me because you're like your journey is inspiring to me as a man. It is. It is. Well, thank you. God bless. Good night. All right. You too. Bye.